I think we've got to get our coordination together. The Spanish and English don't appear on the screens simultaneously. So there are terms like humanity, reality, life, death, truth, language, culture, art, science, social affairs, emotions, love, the biological, and all this evokes different forms of understanding. So, if we have human things in our hands, then we distinguish things. Now, the cultural things, linguistic things, we talk about social things as this is something that is independent of us, that is outside our being. But each and every one of us hears what is being said. So we are not responsible for what you hear, but we are responsible for what we say. And that's the way things are, whether we like it or not. This has to do with our biology. And these terms that we regard as being universal, are they in fact really so universal? Is that really the case? I've written down here seven reflections, but depending on how much time we need, we shall perhaps have to reduce the number we can go through. So the first one has to do with life, with epistemology, with love, with life, with the cultures which we experience, and the responsibility, the opportunity of realizing how human beings came about as ethical beings. So we call the first of these the soul, the soul of the first reflection. And this is a source of inspiration for everything we should be saying during this process of reflection. And we assume that we will have something that will give you food for thought. Thinking is something emotional. Now, I'm standing here, and I cannot really see what's happening in the air around my shoes, so I can't see the niche that I'm now occupying, but I'm living with curiosity and with pain. I can step to the side and ask, do I like the life I'm living now? Am I fond of life? Do I like what I see? And at the moment in which I put these questions to myself, I engage in thought. And I should like to return to the same place that I originally was, but I can't do that because I'm now somewhere else. So thinking is an act of emotion. I ask myself whether I like my life or not, and then I can move on to another question. Do I like how I love? Do I like doing what I do? This act of reflection is an act of freedom. Now, what we should be doing at each soul is that we shall seek, and this will constitute an act of emotion. And it is an act of emotion because you have to overcome certainties. If you don't proceed beyond the realm of certainties, you'll only ever see what you have already thought or what you think that you already know anyway. What is it that we want? We want to explain. We want to explain the character of our lives, the nature of human coexistence, and the worlds that we generate out of the realization of our cultural biology. And we ask ourselves, what kind of people are we? And if we're talking about cultural biology, we mean a fact with respect to the developing of life itself. We're not just biological organisms or cultural organisms. We are and have been at unity since our birth. There is a cultural and biological dynamic which determines our individual natures. And our individual nature is at the same time a social nature and it therefore is part of the social system which we constitute in our entirety. And together we are an individual. So if we're talking about cultural biology, we are referring to this interlock system, this 
interlinking between uh, biology and culture. Now we have invited you to look at this double existence. Humans, as human beings, we are living beings in the implementation of our daily life. And we exist as organisms, as an entirety in a network of relations. Now this dual form of existence is something that we don't normally understand. We talk about roles. People, individuals have several roles, several personalities, if you like. So what we're talking about here is roles in various areas. But we also talk about coexistence within life itself. We have the observer on the right-hand side. He is looking at the inside of this organism, the physiology, and the other gay look, look is at the, uh, at the organism with the niche, with the framework in which existence takes place. And a third gaze, which is not recorded here, is a look at the totality within which this process unfolds. Now, we distinguish in on this chart, and we shall see this later on as a systemic act, that an observer says something about something else, and we distinguish between the organism as a closed system, and the observer looked at the physiology, and at the same time looks at the framework for activity in which we sense language and emotion. So in this case, the observer is surprised. Now, I think that is something that you can see here on this chart. But we are human beings. And we are physical, anatomical human beings in this niche, in particular, in the context of our human lives. And we talk about this relationship between the organism and niche, because the organisms can be separated from the niche in which these organisms exist. And we shall see this again a little later on. This is the change between the unity between a niche and organism. So, in other words, you have a niche everywhere. You don't leave it behind anywhere, and as a result, you change. So, if I walk, I leave my niche is behind me, and all of a sudden, a new niche emerges. So, I should be different, and my niche will also be different too. So. This is the organism, niche, the relational framework, and the psychological framework. These are the areas in which existence takes place. And this totality that we see here develops in human beings because our psychological dimension forms part of this niche. We exist, in other words, in a psychological framework, in a surrounding in which we express ourselves using our language, and we also exist in the circumstances, in the space which we are accorded by our biology. And here we have the point of departure. What we wish to say has to do with our everyday lives. There's no, nothing that's beyond our everyday lives. Everything that happens to us at work, during the day, at night, when we are asleep, when we're together with our friends, all this forms part of our everyday lives. And if we're in a laboratory, we are scientists, or we are technologists, and everything that we do in our lives as human beings constitutes our everyday life.